Okay, guys, welcome to our team Zoom tonight. I am super excited to um, share with you uh, what has been going on in my mind over um, just this stop hustling, stop working your business so incredibly hard and spinning your wheels and not getting anywhere. It has just been such a shift in mindset for me and really, really, truly figuring out what my vision is, what my 90 day vision is, what my one year vision is, what my three year vision is with this um, company. And I haven't quite gotten there. It is a lot of work actually to really start drilling down and figuring out what do I really want? It has been so go, go, go for me for almost seven years that it's really this just shift in how to, um, to change that idea of, of just that hustle harder. As a matter of fact, I had a sign hanging in my office, a framed picture hanging in my office that said, good things come to those who hustle. And I took it down because I'm like, no, that's just we, this culture that we have created in, in work harder and hustle harder. It's just, it's so not working for people. And especially in this industry, as we push it and push it, and push it, you see more people falling out of the industry, just not being able to keep up with that demand of hustle harder. And then you get in and you're like, what am I doing? Like, what should I be doing? What should I be filling my time with? And this doesn't feel quite right to me. So you're going to be, if you are like me and you like, um, trackers and you like things to follow up with and hands on things, you are going to love what I have to share with you at the end. So let's jump right in and just kind of talk about really, really understanding what our personal vision is for this business. I think the key here really um, comes from understanding that, um, that personal growth is going to precede business growth every day of the week. And I know I've talked to many of you about um, how important understanding that personal growth is. If you feel like you're just kind of rolling along and you're, everything's just going just fine and you're not having any personal growth, I can guarantee you that you are not having business growth. So that is the first thing that we need to be diving into and figuring out what does personal growth look like for us. You know, for me, I have been making sure that I have an audio, um, some type of podcast on every single morning while I'm getting ready. I am a country music girl. I, I love my country music. And normally every single morning I am listening to country music as I am getting ready in the morning. And I have switched that. I kind of miss it. I kind of miss it. So I have it a lot in my car, but, um, but honestly, really dialing into those podcasts every morning. And I pick short ones. Um, I love John, the John Maxwell leadership. Um, I love the Bob Heilig stuff. Um, I've just been kind of listening to different podcasts that are leadership type podcasts. That is the position that I am in and what I am passionate about. And so really dialing into that. Um, it's not adding anything extra in, guys. I am figuring out how to not do so much. I am figuring out how to delegate left and right. If you are on my team and you are on our Living the Thrive Life page, you have seen there's all kinds of new people posting. How awesome is that? It's not Jamie Lindbergh all the time. Like, and that took a long time for me, like, like really like five years for me to just release and be okay. Because in my mind, I have just been such a control freak over it. And, and all it's done is held me back because it's, it's one more thing adding to my calendar. When we have so many extremely capable people that can post in our living the thrive life, anyone can do that. Right. So that is really, really cool that new people are doing it. You're hearing from new voices. So just understanding, um, where, where you are in this business, what you should be doing and what you should be doing it. I can't answer that for you. I cannot answer that for you. That is something that you have to work through. So what is that personal growth that needs to happen for you? Is it saying, Hey, Jamie, I would love to post in the, um, in the, in the living, the thrive life group. I'd like to post in the customer group because that's me stepping out of my comfort zone. Awesome. Is that you looking and going, Hey, I need to do reels more because I'm really uncomfortable with reels. When you are feeling comfortable, you are not growing. I can promise you that. So so definitely be thinking about what kind of personal growth you need to be having in that personal growth. You really need to start focusing on what is your vision for your future?
What is the vision for your family? What is the vision for yourself? What is the vision for your team in this? I want, I, I have to say, and I have to admit that I think for years I have pushed my vision on people. And that's just because honestly, I didn't know any better. Like that's how this industry has always rolled, right? Like we just hear all these top leaders sharing their vision and this, this get to the top and be a millionaire and do this and do this and, and, and oh, okay. And then you hit the rank. And you go, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? What exactly do I want to do here? So what is your vision for your life, for your business? Because really the business needs to fit into your personal vision. So I have challenged a lot of people. I have a, a private boot camp group that I have challenged a lot of people. And it has been so incredibly eye-opening to read what people have to say when they start to create their own personal vision. For this. All right. Who is unmuted? Somebody, Emily, Emily, can you mute? Um, so what I'd like for you guys to do, and for those of you who are in the boot camp, you've already done this, so you you can move on to the next part of the homework. But really, is figuring out what your personal um, uh, definition of success is, and the way that that works, guys, is it starts out very very simple. I know I'm being successful when dot dot dot. When are you being successful? Like when do you know that you're being successful? Like I read so many. I'm being successful when I'm being a present mama. When I am down playing with my kids, I am, I am, I know I'm having success when I'm, I know I'm being successful when I'm present with my kids. I, I always like to say, I know I'm being successful when I'm eating well and working out every day. Like that is success for me. I know I'm being successful when I am present with my husband. And sometimes that means putting my phone down while we're just watching TV together. I know I'm being successful when I am linking arms and helping other people figure out what success is for them. I know I'm being successful when I'm walking in what the Lord has called me to do. And then I dig deeper into that. What does that look like? So this is work, guys. It takes some time, but I challenge you to focus in and, and figure out what those um, success statements are. And you should have between seven and 10 of those. They should be wrapped up um, uh, in, in personal, in, in what kind of that business looks like, but really on the personal side of things. Um, I know I'm being successful when I'm not stressing about paying the bills. It's not when I make X amount of dollars. What does that look like for you? So for, a, for a, a, a hot minute, sit and really think about what does it look like for you to be able to, if, if you're working a full-time job, if you're working another job and your goal is to work your business, your multi-level marketing business full-time, what does that look like for you? Really sit down and figure that out because it really shouldn't be, oh, when I hit 40K, when I hit the top rank of my company, I'm going to be successful and be able to quit my job. Really, it's dialing down and figuring out financially, what does that look like for you? Because so many people go, oh, I need to be making $10,000 a week. And then they, they, they kind of dial it in and they go, gosh, I don't need to be making that. Figuring out what your house payment is, what, you know, when, when, when we kind of were like, oh, I'd love for Mike to be able to just work part-time. Like Mike is like, my husband is like such a great cook and he loves that. Like he loves, like, he's one of those guys that like goes in and makes sauces and like tastes them. And he knows like what he needs to add to him. Like, I'm not like that at all, like I, at all. Um, and he's like really good about like wanting to be involved with my girls, like going and picking up from carpool and all of those things. Like he's like a plus, 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 like he's dialed into all of that. He's a great girl dad. And, um, and so what did that look like for us to be able for him to only have to work part time because he really does love his job and he owns his own company. So he wants to keep his hand in it. So we have to dial that in financially. Like how much did I need to make for, for him to dial out of that? So, so a lot of times that's what you need to do. You know, I talked with somebody yesterday or the day before yesterday, yesterday was a blur for me. 
um, the day before yesterday. And, and she's a nurse, part-time nurse, but nurses, nurses make a lot of money, but, um, she's overworked even part-time, like she's exhausted and she really wants to build her network marketing business. And so we talked about, you know, how much are you making there? How much do you need to make? Like, what does that look like? So a lot of this, when you're sitting down and, and creating your personal vision of success, it's not mine. It's not what Kendra's done. Your cost of living may be way different than my cost of living. I mean, we've all gone up with the price of gas. So let's be real there. But, and if you have a kid getting ready to be a senior, you need to make more money because the senior year is going to cost you a fortune, but that's beside the point. I digress. So kind of be thinking about what that looks like for you. So yes, a lot of the times for a lot of us, your, that personal definition of success does include a financial piece because we are a huge provider for our family. Or if you're not married, you are the sole provider for yourself. So a lot of times we need to be kind of looking at that. And then from that amount of money, from, from that figuring that out, then you figure out what you need to be doing in your business. From there, then you figure out what your growth oriented actions, we call those GOAs instead of IPAs, which is kind of the same thing but thinking about them as growth oriented actions is just how you're managing your mind on that, changing your mindset to as I'm reaching out to people, as I'm following up with people, as I'm getting people on three-way calls, those are growth oriented actions, not IPAs. IPAs means hustle, 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 income producing activities. Oh, we got to produce income. No, we're talking about growing in this business and growing your future and your family's future, right? So it's managing your mind around that, changing up the verbiage and that. So um, figuring out your personal definition of success really is looking at the quality of life that you want to live. That's it. And financially, where does that land you? You know, I, I have kind of a high number because my quality of life is being able to travel whenever I want, take my kids and go whenever I want. My quality of life is we have a wedding in August and I want to fly all of us first class up to the wedding and stay for four days and be able to do whatever we want. That amount of money changes. It's more expensive to eat out. It's more expensive to fly right now. Like all of that changes. Maybe that's not a huge priority for you right now. I am so dialed into spending as much freaking family time as I can because my kid's leaving in two and a half months. So like all of these things like come up. So these have changed throughout the years. Like we really enjoyed taking our kids to nice dinners. When my kids were little, we were not taking them to sushi and steakhouses, right? So what is, and sometimes people, that's not a priority for that. So you have to kind of figure out what is that quality of life look like for you? What would your ideal schedule look like? What does the ideal schedule look like for you? I mean, for me, I enjoy, I'm a morning person, but I was talking to a girl the other day. She was like, my ideal schedule is to not get out of bed till 9 a.m. I'm like, more power to you, sister, because she's a late night person. I'm in bed by 8.30. Like, no shame in the game, right? Like, that's just how it is. So figuring out what does that look like? What is your, what is your ultimate day look like? My ultimate day looks like me getting up early, going and working out, spending time with the Lord, walking our dogs hanging out with Mike for a little bit, dialing into work for a few hours, getting up, making lunch together. Like my, like, what does that look like? Again, he owns his own business and works at home too. So that's why I said lunch together. We go to Costco together. You guys, like we're one of those people. We're like the, that couple. So what is, what is your ideal schedule look like day to day? Um, you know, I, I have often thought over this past week, if, if any of you have been following me on social media, this graduation has been a big deal. And um, over this whole month, I have just been so, it has hit me so hard throughout my seven years with the company. It has hit me. There's been a few times in, in this company and just this time has been so like it hit me in the face, how thankful I am for the opportunity that I have had, because I have been so incredibly present with my kid through all of this. She's driven me crazy. Let me tell you, like, 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 don't think it's all like sunshine and roses around here. Like I wanted to wring her neck right before graduation yesterday, like wring her neck. Um, and Kendra got a whole earful today as I'm like venting about it. So it's not all sunshine and roses, but I've been there. I've been there through the crap too. I've shown up. I didn't miss any of it. She's leaving in two and a half months and I haven't missed a single thing. How cool is that? That is my ideal schedule. 
is to be able to get up and walk away from my desk and spend time with her when she's home, right? So, so what does that look like for you? Some of you are like, hey, my ideal schedule is getting away from my kids for a while. Trust me, I was there. Like, let me just tell you, Lisa can, Lisa can raise her hand and tell you too, as, as I'm seeing her smile. Like there were many times where I was like, um, uh, how many thrive after fives can we do? Because I have to get away from my kids. Like, so I just transitioned. It's, you know, I've been with the company seven years, Let, they grow up, you know? So quality of life is super important. What's important to you physically, your body, what's important, you know, are you, are you filling your time with moving your body, working out, taking care of your body, spiritually, mentally, relationally, financially, professionally, are you doing things professionally that fill your cup? Um, are you doing things for yourself personally that fill your cup? So kind of thinking about that, what does freedom look like for you? When we always say, oh, we have so much freedom in this business. What does freedom look like for you? Because many of you may be looking at Kendra and going, oh, that's freedom. Like that she says that's freedom. So that's freedom. Some of you are looking at, you know, Jason Camper and, and, and Paul Gravette and their social media. And, oh, that's, that's freedom. But maybe that's really not what freedom looks like for you. You have to decide that for yourself. Kendra's idea of freedom is completely different than mine. Like mine is let's get away. Let's go on vacation. Let's be away. Hers is like, let's be out with the horses and stay at our house and, and all like live in a compound forever. Like she loves that. That is not who I am. And so figure out what does freedom look like for you? How do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? When you sit down to work your business, how do you want to feel? When you sit down at dinner with your kids, how do you want to feel? All of those things are so incredibly important in figuring out your personal definition of success. How do you want to feel about yourself? How do you want to feel about your boundaries that you're having? How do you want to feel about your personal life? How do you want to feel about the people that you are pouring into every single day? So all of these things, guys, are super important for you to just focus in on to figure out what that personal definition of success. If I'm talking too fast, if you're like, whoa, this is a lot let me know. I'm happy to like, I'm loving this stuff. Like I am so loving. It has changed my entire vision after seven years in this company. It's completely changed the trajectory in this company. So really at the end of the day, so who's that girl? Who's that girl that has that show on Netflix all about cleaning up? Like she is all about cleaning and organizing your house. I can't remember her name, but you know, she, she always talks about, um, what sparks joy for you? Like if you pick up something in your house and you're like, okay, do I keep this or do I get rid of this? Does it spark joy for you? Right? Like this sparks joy. I could, and this only sparks joy because somebody it's very, very special gave it to me and wrote me a whole entire card when she gave it to me. So that's why it sparks joy. So, but does your business spark joy for you? Like when you sit down to work your business or when you think, oh my gosh, I need to, you know, reach out to people. I need to do my follow-ups. Are you, are you joyful about that? I light up, light up. Like I love it. I get so excited to reach out to people. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm excited. Is your business sparking joy? If it's not, it's time to dig in and figure out why not and what's going on. Your business needs to spark joy. Um, and you need to be intentional. So that's what we're boiling it all down to now that I've talked for 20 minutes is really being intentional. And so to be intentional in your business, all of this stuff has to happen. To be intentional in your business, every single piece of this has to happen. I'm gonna give you guys some really cool stuff here. So I did a personal time audit and you guys are gonna be able to do a personal time audit because of Monty Stratton. So I've hired a coach, Lisa's, Lisa hired the coach too and we've been doing this personal time audit and guys, it is the most eye-opening thing you have ever, ever done. Like ever done. Like I just cannot even believe it. So what I want you to do is drop in the chat for me how many, so you guys all know, like, first of all, I'm going to tell you in the past 30 days, uh, it, I'm sorry, in the past two weeks, in the past two weeks, I have had 20 new accounts. I've created 20 new accounts between my account and my husband's account because I work both accounts. He doesn't even know how to log into his account. And I've had seven new orders in the past two weeks, 10 in the past, my, my PBA is 10 in 30 days. I've had seven in the past two weeks. So with, with that thought, and you guys see my posts on social media and all of that, drop in the chat, how many hours a week do you think I work my business? How many hours a week do you think I work my business? Drop in the chat. So I'm gonna talk, so as you're dropping that in the chat, I'm gonna tell you exactly how many. I'm gonna tell you exactly because I've been doing a personal time audit. 
And so I'm going to tell you exactly how many. So this personal time audit. So take notes here. This is how you're going to take notes. And then if you are on my team, please message me and I will get you set up because I have to create the personal time audit. I have to create a duplicate copy. It's in um, Google Docs. I have to create a duplicate copy for each and every one of you. So you'll have your own specific time audit. And so if you're on Kendra's team, she, I've already, we've already gotten her started. And so she's going to do it for you. So if you're on, I mean, obviously all of you are on Kendra's team, but if you're underneath me, I mean, if you're underneath Kendra, but not underneath me, then go ahead and, and connect with her. So here's where you need to take notes. This is the important part. This is all going to be managing your mind on how you manage your time. There are four categories in the personal time audit, four. That's it. And then we can't add any more. Number one is me time. This is any time that you are doing anything for yourself. You're getting ready in the morning. You're working out. You're making yourself lunch. You're anything that you feel is for yourself. Get this. It's kind of crazy because we always say, oh, self-care, personal time, do stuff for me. When you manage your mind around it, it is crazy how much time you're actually spending on yourself. It really is. Like, especially if you're somebody like me that like gets all ready every single day, like it takes me 45 minutes or sometimes an hour to get ready every day. So, um, and, and, and all of a sudden you go, gosh, I am spending more time on myself than I thought I was because you're, you're tracking all of that. So the tracker, you'll, you'll understand once you see the tracker, as a matter of fact, oh, I can't screen share because I, I uh, oh, wait, let me see if I can. Oh, no, Kendra's disabled sharing screen. Okay, you'll understand once you see the tracker. So the tracker is broken down in every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, the tracker is broken down. So you will track every 15 minutes for the next seven days starting tomorrow if you if you want to start tomorrow. And um, it really isn't that hard, um, although I don't know how to do it on the phone. I think Kendra was kind of playing with it on the phone. I have my laptop with me all the time, so it's really easy to do it on the computer. But tracking your time. Is it literally in every 15 minute block? So you start from the time that you wake up until the time you go to bed. You do not track the time that you're sleeping. So just the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, you're going to track. And so if you wake up and you lay in bed for 15 minutes, you just write, wake up. That is me time. That is, that is me time. If you're laying in bed for 15, 20, 30 minutes, that's me time, right? So that's number one. Um, number two is family time. So what I want to be very clear, and especially for those of you who have littles at home, family time is time that you are enjoying being with your family. Okay. Enjoying being with your family. When you are doing laundry, when you are cooking them dinner, when you are giving them baths, I don't give baths anymore clearly, but when you're doing all of that, that is not family time. Family time is when you are, we sat at brunch for an hour and a half this morning. That was family time. I sat at the graduation for four hours yesterday. That was like the pre, you know, saving the seats and everything in the hundred degree heat, I will mention. That is family time because I am enjoying it. I'm sitting with my family, waiting for my kid to graduate high school. Like that's family time. When I was ironing her robe, getting her cap ready, getting everything ready. That is work time, work, work. So if you are making dinner for your family, if you are doing laundry, if you're cleaning your house, here's another thing that I have differentiated. I have, it takes me 15 minutes to go pick up Sophia and it takes us 15 minutes to get home approximately. So work time is the 15 minutes to go get her family time is the 15 minutes coming home because I'm sitting visiting with her in the car for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes is work. 15 minutes is family. If I'm going to her basketball game and it takes me 30 minutes to drive to her basketball game, that 30 minutes is work time. And then the basketball game is family time because I'm engaging in her family time. If you're going to the basketball game and you are dreading it and it is not fun, that is work. That's work. If you are playing Barbies with your kid and you're like me and hate playing Barbies, like I am not a play mom. I was not a play mom and you hated it. That's work. It's what you manage your mind around. It is your responsibility to manage your mind in what you are doing during the day. So that is key in this next week. 
So if you have a job outside of your network marketing business, that is called work. So here's another thing. I subbed last week. I was subbing at the kids' school last week, which I love to do. So I, I'm subbing from, I don't know, 7.30 to 2.30, right? So instead of, I didn't say all that time was work because guess what? I wrote thank yous in there. I was doing a post in there. I made a reel while I was there. I followed up with people. Like, so those 15 minute blocks, I put in birthdays, uh, reach outs, auto ship follow-ups, thank you notes. So not all of it was tracked as work because I was doing. So now your next question, I know what your question is. It's what, what do you do, Jamie, when you're multitasking? So get this, if you Google multitasking guys, there's really no such thing as it. Like there's no such thing there. Like the brain cannot multitask. The brain cannot do two things at once. So really it's what you're managing your mind around. So when I'm getting ready in the morning and I'm listening to a podcast, I could put that as business time because I'm listening to podcasts of business, but really it's me time. Like I'm getting, like I'm doing my hair, my makeup, like that's me time. Like that is not a separate time for me. But if you feel like oh, I'm getting ready and I'm listening to a podcast, I feel like that's business. Like I, I really don't, I don't want to be doing this. Then that is business time, right? So you have to decide. So anytime you're working on your Laval business, anytime you're working on your network marketing business, it's called business time. So there's your four categories. Me time, family time, work time, business time. If you have questions about it, let me know. So I have been tracking for two weeks. So by the way, you have to message me for the tracker. I have to go into Google Docs. I have to create the tracker for you. And then I have to send you the link. If you are going to want to share this with your team, or you are going to want to do it more than one week, what you need to do is make a copy of the tracker I made for you and call it your master copy. So this is the key. And so if you have questions about this, just call me and I'll explain it to you. But you have to have a master copy because it doesn't, you can't, there's no way to delete that first copy that you got. So if your plan is like mine, I'm going to track for an entire month to see, I want to basically see how much I get paid hourly over the month. And so I'm trying to track. So I know this is a lot of information. I really wanted to stop at 520. So, um, okay. Oh, so some of you you all are way, way lower than I thought. So I honestly thought that I worked this business like 40 to 50 hours a week. Like that's how I felt. Like I just felt like I was working the business all the time. It sparks joy and I love it. And so I felt like I was working it all the time. So in a week, in a week's time, I'm just going to tell you. And by the way, I get up usually around five, five thirty every single morning and I'm in bed typically sometime around eight 30. Keep in mind the past couple of weeks have been weird because we've had so many graduation parties. So there's been like, and like, graduation last night, right? Like there's, there's been some nights that we've been out to like 11 o'clock. <gasps> it's crazy for me. Um, so I'm going to just share with you my me time. Are you ready? Week one, my me time was 40 hours, almost 41 hours, actually 40 hours and 75, 40.75 week two was 32 hours. So, so lower eight hours lower was the me time. Um, my family time in week one was 31 hours and 28 hours in week two. So week one was 31 hours was family time and week two is 28 work time. Like the time that I'm, you know, doing laundry and all that crap, get this week one was seven hours and week two was 22 and a half hours. So obviously I did a lot more in week two than I did in week one. I, and I think it's because I was subbing. I subbed twice in week two, my business hours were 30 hours in week one. 30 hours in week one and 25 hours in week two. So it really is being intentional. So actually, I totally thought you guys were all going to say that I was working way more than I am. So, but yeah, I am working about 25 to 30 hours a week. And I promise you that I am grossly overpaid with that. And I can't say those amounts of money. You guys all know our rules, but I can promise you I'm grossly overpaid. And I love what I do. And a lot of it just has to do with how I'm managing my mind around it. So we're going to dive more into this. And if any of you are really wanting to like have some one-on-one -on -one time with me, I am loving this stuff. So I would be more than happy to, you have to reach out to me. I am not reaching out to you. I cannot reach out to every single person. So reach out to me, say, hey, Jamie, I'd love to talk a little bit more about this. I want you to really focus this next week. Um, so send me a message. you got to send me a message, um, either text me or Facebook message me. Um, I'm also creating boundaries, which this is going to shock people like Lisa and Kendra um, and Rochelle. 
tell that I am actually setting boundaries and I'm not answering my text messages immediately when I'm, I, I'm not bringing my phone to the dinner table anymore. It's taken me seven years to get to this point. Um, so I am managing um, my time around all of that. Um, but it's really because I'm tracking everything and I want to make sure that I'm being intentional with my family. So this has all been huge change for me. I'm super, super excited to continue sharing it with you guys again. Um, let me know if you want that tracker by texting me or Facebook messaging me and I will get it for you. And um, I will, if you need an ex, if you need me to help you figure out how to get a master copy of it, cause you want to share it. Um, totally fine, but it's just very, very eye opening. So anyway, have a great night. You guys super excited about this. Hope that you guys got a lot out of it. Um, um, can I feel free to share any feedback that you have, uh, and we will be back here next week. I'm really excited. Tessa Curtis is going to be on next week with Instagram hacks. So you're for sure going to want to be in for that. So have a great one guys. Bye-bye.